Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to another short review of this topic of rhythm disorders in children. Uh, I would like to say that these videos are not meant to be uh, exhaustive in content, but I am basically trying to provide some core points so that you can take these as an overview of the topic and it can help you provide context when you are trying to read in detail and reviewing the topic again. And all of these videos are meant to be just educative in nature. So uh, the overview and what we are going to talk about in this part is the we discussed the mechanisms of AVRT, AVNRT, the subtypes of SVT in the previous uh, video. We'll be discussing a little bit more detail about ectopic atrial, multifocal atrial, junctional ectopic, atrial filter fibrillation and ventricular tachycardias. So continuing with the last thing where we did not discuss a little in detail about was, what the, was the management of AVRTs. So the goal of treatment here is to terminate the re-entry circuit and restore the sinus rhythm. So if the patient is in shock, you always go with ABC and if there is no vascular excess, you can go with direct DC cardioversion, synchronized cardioversion initially and uh, if the patient is acutely ill but stable, relatively stable and IV excess is there, you can give adenosine. Adenosine will cause an AV block at the AV node and it will interrupt the circuit and how it is given and what is the importance we have already discussed. So adenosine apart from being used here, it has other many more diagnostic uses when we are managing arrhythmias. So its effect is not just confined to the AV node, but it also affects the ectopic atrial tachycardias, junctional tachycardias, intraatrial reentry tachycardias and certain ventricular tachycardias. Uh, the thing is that during administration, we have to be cautious about hemodynamic collapse because it in, uh, it can cause sometimes if it doesn't work it can cause increase in tachycardia and fibrillation also so cardiac defibrillator should always be at bedside when we are using this drug for either therapeutic or diagnostic purpose and digoxin can be used but takes a lot of time not used in acute situations so the management is later situations uh, uh, after initial stabilization beta blockers procainamide and amidron uh, digoxin and beta blockers they can enhance integrate conduction uh, down the accessory pathway so they can allow for a more rapid ventricular response during atrial flutter or fibrillation so you should you they should use they should be used with caution suppose if your the SVT is not AVRT and it is atrial flutter or fibrillation that can happen the other things are transesophageal pacing vagal maneuvers uh, calcium channel blockers in general are contraindicated in children although there is a, some uh, uh, few indications for IV virapamil that we will discuss and chronic therapy, digoxin beta blockers and for recurrent SVT usually on this type of recurrent arrhythmias radio frequency ablation is required so let's look at this rhythm here we see a lot of P waves and a few QRS. You will see a lot of P waves and QRS. So, if you uh, remember how to approach the arrhythmias, so P is to Q, QRS ratio or atrial to ventricular complex is more than 1 is to 1. So, that means it's atrial rhythm. And here there is a 2 is to 3, uh, 2 is to 1 or 3 is to 1 block is always there. So, not all the atrial contractions are being conducted to the ventricles. So that the ventricular rhythm is rate is usually less than the atrial rate. It is usually caused by a reentrant circuit, which is causing repeated electrical activity. So atrial rate may be 250 to 300, where the and in flutter and in the fibrillation, the atrial rate may go up to 400 to 600. So you get the characteristic the sawtooth pattern of the flutter waves in uh, in flutter. In fibrillation, the rhythm, the rate is a bit too fast, and atria is basically fibrillating. So you're not, you don't really get any reasonably uh, well seen P waves. So flutter can be seen in newborns after uh, when congenital heart disease, post surgery, where surgery has involved the atria. In fancy, it is rare. Like echo should be done to rule out if it's there to rule out associated defects like ASD or Epstein's anomaly. Usually there is a re-entry circuit as we have said, uh, confined to the atrium 
and the isthmus between the tricuspid wall and the ventricular connections is the area of slow conduction here we get the sawtooth waves rate and av block is usually present these they may sometimes convert spontaneously so in this picture you can see all the three uh, common atrial tachycardias this is atrial fibrillation p waves are hardly present flutter there are some flutter waves with variable with a fixed conduction to the ventricle so it's a regular rhythm fibrillation is irregularly irregular flutter is a regular rhythm multifocal atrial tachycardia you get p waves of different morphologies that is the characteristic of multifocal atrial tachycardias so for medicines for uh, atrial flutter you have transesophageal pacing cardioversion iv digoxin later on procainamide and amadron sotalol uh, intraatrial reentrant tachycardia happens as we seen the patients have undergone surgery where there has been an incision in the around the atria like asd repair atrial baffling procedures for tga then the reentry circuit around the scar can happen this we have already discussed that atrial rate is really high symptomatology depends on the various ventricular response rate all not the or not all the p waves are being conducted to the ventricle so ventricle rate is usually less if the ventricular rate was increases then the hemodynamic compromise would increase that's why drugs which increase the autotrophic conduction are dangerous in these settings now we'll look at this ecg We'll try to analyze what is this so whatever uh, first of all we have to establish sinus rhythm so sinus rhythm we should have a p wave should be following the each p wave uh, should be before the qrs qrs following the p wave and it should be up should be upright and lead to 2 3 and avf so let's look at lead we have a long lead to here let's try to look at this um, qrs this seems to be T, then there is one, one wave but it's inverted, then there, and there is another QRS. In AVF, it's a similar thing, QRS, there's a T, then inverted wave. This inverted wave here is the P wave. Uh, AVR, here you have a QRS, then you have the one another inverted wave and then another one positive wave. It seems to be the P wave and the T wave seems to be inverted here. So here in this rhythm rate is usually uh, around 130 to 150 but P wave in lead 2 is inverted, AVF also P wave is inverted so it's not a sinus rhythm this seems to be an ectopic atrial rhythm although it could represent AV re-entry uh, tachycardia with a very very long RP interval where, where you could get inverted P waves after the QRS complex QRS P uh, T QRS P uh, rhythm let's look at this one here we have like this qrs p waves are there they are visible there is but if you look at this long lead to you get this p wave and then look at this one and this one these are different types of p waves within the same lead there is a different morphology of the p wave in the same lead to so therefore it is suggesting that it's a multifocal atrial tachycardia it is also called a chaotic atrial tachycardia it is usually associated with an underlying cardiac defect spontaneous resolution sometimes occurs in these so the management principles in these type of rhythms is these are basically increased automaticity type of tachycardia so we have to decrease the automaticity of the focus we have to slow the AV conduction if we have digoxin calcium channel blockers although less than one year calcium channel blockers are contraindicated beta blockers can be used because they oppose the atrogenic stimulation of the focus to decrease the automaticity class 1a uh, agents such as procainamide class 1c such as flaconide and propofenone they act by depressing automaticity and they increase the refractoriness class 3 agents such as uh, this one amadron and sotalol they can also slow conduction throughout the myocardium uh, so they will slow the conduction throughout the myocardium therefore they would also slow the conduction in the abnormal focus also the overall they can be useful in managing this increased automaticity type of tachycardia is the ectopic atrial and the multifocal atrial spontaneous resolution of ectopic is in the relatively older patients unlikely and catheter ablation tends to be usually the first line therapy 
younger patients resolution of eat is re spontaneous resolution is relatively more common for refractory type of ectopic atrial and multifocal atrial catheter ablation is the treatment of choice sometimes when it's really going out of control then adenosine overdrive pacing cardioversion can be tried but they are usually not very useful now let's look at this ecg here let's look at lead 2 so here you can see the p waves are somewhat present but the ventricular rate and p vent wave seems not to be in sync so there is a narrow qrs definitely uh, it's hardly two small squares but the p waves is very sometimes present here sometimes within the qrs and uh, so let's say what could this be where well, we need a bit more uh, information so basically uh, we can look at one more uh, rhythm here here we can see the qrs is narrow uh, both this one and this one are representing a type of the stimular arrhythmia so you have a narrow qrs but you look at p wave here qrs t p qrs t p p and now you can see that this PR interval is uh, changing and here P is very just in line with the QRS this P is in line with the QRS now the P seems to be embedded within the QRS and now the P is gone and as the rhythm progresses the P will appear again so this is like a marching through the rhythm this is AV dissociation and narrow QRS complex this is suggestive of conduction within the ventricle and through the Hesperkinja system so this is actually a type this is a junctional rhythm junctional ectopic tachycardia you are having narrow qrs but the complexes can be regular or irregular if there is retrograde atrial conduction one is to one or there can be av dissociation with variable conduction to the atria so this chat is usually does not is a bit different from the avrt and avnrt it does not involve the uh, this uh, uh, does not involve the re-entry circuit here it's originating from within the bundle node AV node so this can be uh, congenital or post-operative infants and children focal and congenital are not as common as post-operative which is usually seen up, uh, up to 5% patients after cardiac surgery here we have as we seen in enhanced automaticity within or near to AV junction narrow complex AV dissociation ventricular rate can be faster than the atrial rate so one is to one although conduction is possible you can have the same rate but ventricular rate can be faster familial congenital but this immediate post-operative is usually seen in clinical scenarios it's usually transient but it can last up to 72 hours now, although it's self-limiting but it can cause significant hemodynamic instability so you get depressed myocardial function very very high heart rates so this treatment becomes a bit challenging it's usually seen where repairs have involved such, uh, manipulation of the AV nodal area such as VSD closure top repair AV canal repairs so management is congenital types amadron can be given radio frequency ablation cryotherapy post-op jet can give amadron prokinamide overall rate suppression and increasing refractory uh, period control fever hypothermia these are usually uh, response to hypothermia a core temperature has to be reduced adrenergic agonist stimulation they are sensitive to the adrenergic state so they should be avoided and sequential AV pacing can be done so you pace the atria very very high rate so that you get so that uh, pacing will take over and you will get sequential AV conduction so that the output will become better and the AV dissociation will go away it's the AV dissociation which is causing the hemodynamic compromise in jet so now coming to ventricular tachycardias so basic principles any white complex rhythm should be first assumed to be ventricular so assessment is wide complex so p to qrs ratio has to be seen so qrs it, it will be faster than there will be dissociation the ventricular rate is faster than p wave the p wave will either not be visible or retrograde conduction you can get one is to one relationship with inverted p waves but that's rare 
so atrial ecg will have to be uh, done picardial wires if they are there then you can try to pick up atrial ecg to look at the p waves but in general in clinical scenarios you will get a white complex rhythm the common causes in cardiac post cardiac icu surgery icus or prior surgical repair in pediatric medical icus you can get myocarditis cardiomyopathy or primary electrical disease like this so sustained vtac usually is uncommon but if it is sustained then you need more work up electrophysiological studies usually it is regularly white complex ab dissociation it's a life threatening with them because ventricular is are contracting at a very high rate and there is no av con sequential contraction so not not much filling time hemodynamic compromise it's quite common all of it pulse rhythms uh, deal with the management in acute situations so treatment usually lidoc lidocaine procainamide amadron if the patient is critically ill so pulseless or pulse with pulse so if critically ill with pulse you may try these medications or synchronized cardioversion in a pulseless condition usually defibrillation has to be done very soon long term medications depends on the studies and the substrate uh, analysis so just a brief uh, tabular format format uh, primary secondary and long term management in the common arrhythmia so if you have a sinus tachy first identify etiology secondarily not coming in control look at the cause try to treat it sedation and analgesia catecholamine titration beta blockers in resistant cases and if it is long standing unexplained then we will try to rule out non sinus rhythms av nrts uh, av nodal reentry you have vehicle maneuvers uh, to cause av nodal block adenosine transesophageal pacing and uh, procainamide esmolol virapamil procainamide in secondary uh, phases and in long term beta blockers class 1 to 3 agents and radio frequency ablations ectopic atrial amadron esmolol cardioversion should be avoided if flutter less than 24 hours then rate control procainamide pace termination dc cardioversion albutilide pace termination rf fibrillation in multifocal atrial procainamide amadron beta blocker propofenone amadron and uh, lastly for monomorphic this is the vt monomorphic vt stable these drugs can be tried procainamide lidocaine long long standing vt you get a substrate based treatment where your mapping is done and the particular areas are you try it out focused at and vt with known heart disease uh, initial management remains the same but you can in long standing icd rf ablation amadron idiopathic virapamil can be used although virapamil is said that it's uh, not to be used under one year of age due to proven risk of sudden collapse it's a negative inotrop and uh, myocardium of the children may be more sensitive to this changes in the calcium concentrations uh there have been some various case reports regarding this but uh, recently regarding fascicular variant of the ventricular tachycardia uh this has been found useful if given slowly instead of uh, very fast bolus a few articles have come up regarding this Uh, idio pulse less vt again defib beta blocker amadron magnesium uh, intracardiac defibrillator implant implantable cardiac defibrillator litron vfib is defib epinephrine vasopressin uh, secondary and ultimately icd implantation if it's not responding so this was all in this part uh, later uh, a separate section for bradyarrhythmias arrhythmias and the classification the cardiac action potential anti arrhythmics and a bit of about the pacing that you can do and how it can help in what conditions uh, thanks for your time and i hope you will you have found this useful thank you